Hey fellow photographer, how's it going? I'm Michael Selbe. I'm right now over here in what we call a remote controlled photo shoot, which is something which I do with my Good Light Academy members. So they will take over my camera and pose the model and shoot over here in the scene behind me. But before we do that, I wanted to explain something fundamental and I thought I will record this for social media as well because it might be helpful for you. I want to tell you how to improve your exposure by using spot metering in your camera. Now, spot metering is the only in-camera metering method that you should ever use when you are in manual mode and, and you are doing portrait work. Uh, it's, it's your only friend. All the other metering methods are averaging out values which you don't have under control. With spot metering, this is simple. Now, I can explain that in oh, maybe five minutes, maybe 10 and uh, I'm going to do that. I will use our set over here and the model will be Barry from Ikea. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. My wife Emily will be our model. Emily, can you come and help us and be our model in the middle of the scene on this box? Good. With the model in the middle, we've got the very dark background behind her. It's dark brown sort of fabric. And uh, we are going to light this with an LED panel. It's the Falcon Ice RX36, which you might have seen in other videos of mine. Let's bring it over here. It's roughly one and a half meters away from her. Fantastic. The panel is on 100% power at uh, 5600 Kelvin and now let's bring in the camera which is the Sony a7R2 over here and how do you now get the camera settings if you don't know the exposure values for this scene uh, right now they seem to be wrong uh, let's have a look at that on the screen um, First of all, it's an auto white balance, which usually will do a good job. But since we uh, we know what what white balance our uh, light has got, why not choose the white balance and why not go to 5600 Kelvin? Uh, then it will be correct, just to be on the safe side. Then I've got uh, yeah one uh, over 125th of a second, and this is because. In a portrait session, uh, the one that I photograph will blink and move slowly and so on. And 125 of a second is still fast enough to freeze those little or slow movements. So I would try to not go slower than that. Then if this would be a glamour photo shoot, my aperture would be f2.8. But since this is a vintage look, I want more depth of field. That's why I choose f11. So this is already set up correctly. Now. The only variable left is ISO. It's now on 4000, which is obviously too bright. Now we see in the histogram highlights are burning out. So this is not correct. And this is where the uh, spot metering method comes into play. How does that work? I want to show you that on the back of my camera. And for that, I will bring in another iPhone, which I will put onto the screen in a second. If I zoom in, go over here onto your skin, then you see a little circle in the middle of the frame. And this is now where the camera will meet. It will only take values from inside this little circle, which usually covers three to 5% of the whole frame. But to understand what to do with the values, we have to have a look at the exposure meter of the camera. Yeah? Let's bring that up. Your camera will have such a scale from minus three to plus three or minus five to plus five or whatever. Uh, you will see that in the viewfinder or on your LCD display and it tells you where your current exposure reading is. So inside that circle that we have seen, I'm now nearly two stops overexposed. I'm on plus 1.7, so I'm too bright over there, right? This is what it tells me. Zero would be exact midtones. Uh, a lot of people believe exact midtone would mean it's the correct exposure for an 18% reflective gray. If you're talking to camera technicians, they are more 
like uh, no, the cameras are calibrated to 14 or 12% reflective gray, whatever it is, it really doesn't matter. It just means on zero, you've got really, really good exposure. It's not about correct, it's about good. Yeah? So I would be too bright. Um, everything over here to the outer parts uh, is, is going into an area yeah, which, which is uh, exposed not, not so good anymore. Everything between minus one and plus one is still midtones. That's still good exposure. But when it goes to plus two, then it's really extreme highlights. Yeah? You don't want to have skin in that area. If it goes to minus two, it's already shadows. Yeah? You don't want to have the main parts of your photos there. And minus three would be deep shadow. Plus three, it's, it's really harsh highlights. Yeah? You don't want to expose in that area. So, what area should we choose for exposure? Now, since this is a portrait, I want to have a correct exposure on her chin, basically. That, that is a good medium area. And it now, over here in my display, doesn't show me the exposure meter anymore, but just this little indicator, which uh, says MM for manual mode and plus two. I'm two stops overexposed. Yeah. And that, that's enough. I don't need the exposure meter. I just need this little uh, thing over here. I know I would have to dial down my ISO value quite a lot until I am at plus zero. I have to ask the model to look into the light because later on I will also tell her to look into uh, the light over there. Now I'm see I'm, I'm a third of a stop higher so I will go down a little bit more to ISO 800. That is now perfect. Let's see what else is going on. On her forehead, we have got a highlight. Yeah, over there, the light source is mirroring. It's reflecting. And there, I'm on plus 0 0.7, which is good for a highlight. That's okay. If I would meet her anywhere else, uh, then I would get wrong values. Yeah, let's say on her dress. Yeah, her dress is now 1.7 stops overexposed. If I would dial the correct ISO for that, that would be 200. The rest would be way too dark. Now, if I would meter on the box, let's say, next to the model, the box is really in the light, but to have a correct exposure over there, or a good exposure, I'm on ISO 6400. Now the rest of the model is totally overexposed. So it's, it's important to really meet her in her face, ideally on her chin. So let's go to a correct value over there, plus minus zero. Fantastic, I'm good to go, I can shoot. I will do so quickly and make a couple of photos. I can move the camera out a little bit. This is already a beautiful portrait, let's photograph that. Can you look over your shoulder and down a little bit? Yeah, I go down to just have her chest and a bit of arm over there. Fantastic. Three, two, one. This is good. Now I will zoom out and, and, and have her hands because she has got her hands beautifully over there. And a bit of the box. Can you look again over your shoulder down? Three, two, one. Fantastic. And I will do one thing. I will bring Lightroom onto the screen as well, because then you can see the photos coming in. Okay, so the next thing I would do over here is I would ask the model to lower the side of her dress a little bit to make it a bit more sexy. Yes, exactly like that. We'll zoom in again for this one. And now I want a little bit more shadow on her. I will go around with my light source to have a little bit more shadow. I'm not changing the distance between the light source and the model. That means I don't have to meet her again. The tones will be exactly the same. It doesn't matter if I've got more shadow or less shadow in the frame. Now chin a little bit down while you're looking down. This is really good. Three, two, one. There we go. Let's do the opposite, something really innocent. You are sitting on the box with the legs to the light source and you've got your hands at your neck, looking innocently, a little bit towards the camera down. Yeah, a little bit bored, let's say. <laughs> this is then a cutesy photo. Is that okay if I make you a, a really 
young girl in the photo. Can I see both feet? So that, yeah, so that I see there is feet. Okay, fantastic. Again, I didn't change the distance between the model and the light source, so I don't have to meet her again. It's all fine. I want to have even more shadow now, so I will go around with the light source a bit more. So now there's a 90 degree angle between camera and, and light source, but again, it doesn't change the tones. Uh, the tones should be perfect. They are perfect. And I'll make the photo. Three, two, one. Oops, that was fast. Okay, good. Now let's do a bigger change. Um, let's do the opposite again. I want you to lay on the box with uh, your buttocks up and uh, have the right knee in an angle so that your buttocks come up a little bit. Uh, upper body to this side, face yeah, to that side. And when I direct her like this, she will now look away from the light source. Uh, we don't want that. This is why I will go with the light source to the other side. But guess what? Again, I will have the light source at the same distance. The distance doesn't change. So what do you think? Do I have to meet her again? Absolutely not. Because the distance didn't change. So let me see. Yeah, this is fantastic. Can I have a little bit more leg and buttocks? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Probably look a little bit uh, down, not, not, not with an angled face, just, yeah, just the chin down. Yeah, this is good. This is fantastic. Okay, I will get the focus from her face. Three, two, one. Good. That would be the result of my photo shoot today. So thank you very much for modeling. <laughs> it's fantastic. Really, really good. And for everybody who's watching, I hope you saw that with spot metering, I can really pick the tiny spot, let's say her chin, which is correctly exposed before I, I make any photo or, or meet her in another way. And from there on, as long as I don't change the distance between light source and, and, and model, in, in this particular case between the light source and her face, I don't have to meet her again. I can just uh, keep going and don't have to change my camera values. I suggest that you make it a habit to always, point A, use spot metering and no other methods, and point B, to keep an eye on your exposure meter inside your camera whenever the center spot of your frame is going over an important part of your image. I mean, if you're shooting pure flash images, it doesn't tell you anything, but, but I have it in my brain, so I, I even look at it during flash sessions and um, it doesn't bring me anything. But as soon as I'm outside and I mix ambient light in or when I've got constant light like over here, then it always gives me the insurance. Yeah, it's in an area where I want this thing to fall. Yeah, so this is a good habit to have. Uh, practice this that you keep an eye on the exposure meter all the time. Practice it with a test model who doesn't mind. <laughs> yeah, And then you use it in a photo shoot with a uh, real model. So my Academy members are waiting. So I will stop this here. I think it was a long video now. I'm sorry, but hopefully you find it useful. Let me know on the socials and I wish you for your photo shoots a lot of fun and good light.